KZ fam, I'm back with another video, and we're gonna be doing something different, man. Uh, we're gonna be checking out the top 10 best anime of 2023 so far, and I want to know what they are because I'm trying to figure out some new shit and, and what to watch. So, we're gonna be checking this out. Thank you guys so much for all the support, man. I appreciate y'all so damn much. If you're new to the channel, you're into the content, make sure to hit that sub button, hit those likes, and turn on nutty bells so y'all get notified whenever I drop a video. And don't forget that down in the description we have the link to all my socials. But let's go. Ah! halfway mark of the year and I think it's pretty fun to Come shake on, things man. up a bit and to do something that I haven't done before. So today I'll be listing down what I personally think are the top 10 shows so far in 2023. Okay. These are my personal takes and while we may have different selections on our rankings, if you haven't watched anything from this year then you could use this list as a reference on a possible show to pick up. Let's start oh, yeah. with Blade of the Guardians. <laughs> What sets Blade of the Guardians apart is its jaw-dropping action scenes. Seriously, these battles are the bomb. The animation is so slick and stylish, it'll have you jumping out of your seat with excitement. From epic displays of strength to lightning-fast combos, oh, yeah. the fights in Blade of the Guardians are like a visual symphony of martial arts goodness. You'll be left wide-eyed and cheering for more, guaranteed. But it's not all about the punches and the feels. The Chinese animation also explores some seriously cool themes. So folks, there you have it. Blade of the Guardians is one hell of an anime that's yeah. taken 2023 by storm. With its kick-ass action, lovable characters and powerful messages it's earned its spot amongst the best of the best oh yeah it looks gruesome <laughs> checking out this channel for a Trigun while, you'll know Stampede. that I like Trigun in its original incarnation. That's why I was super excited when Stampede got announced and when it aired I got something that was on par with my expectations. The secret to enjoying Trigun Stampede is similar to how I look at Ruby's Ice Queendom. It's never going to be the ultimate remake, sequel or new anime that's going to match the original Trigun. Those instances are extremely rare, however what Stampede brings to the table more than satisfied my thirst for something Trigun in the 2020s. It's been a familiar yet different experience watching Stampede and like... I actually think that it compares rather favorably to the original Trigun. It feels a lot more character focused uh. giving us a similar taste of the old one with a new flavor and it isn't anything to scoff at on the production side of things either. This is a welcome addition to the library if you're to ask me. It looks like it looks kind of like the cyberpunk uh, style of anime. <laughs> Up next, we have Heavenly Delusion. And it could be recency bias and all, but Heavenly Delusion has impressed me so far. It's something that I almost glossed over when doing the seasonal preview for spring, but I'm sure as hell I'm glad that I did not Checking this out, it has an atmosphere that you don't get to see every day in anime. People have compared it to something like Promised Neverland, Sunny Boy, along with The Last of Us, and I'm pretty mm. inclined to agree. It's a show that really makes you keep watching with the mystery and layers of questions that are thrown at you. Heavenly Delusion really thrives on its atmosphere, setting, and the occasional action that keeps things fast and heated. All this complemented with excellent art and sound direction to capture the perfect ambiance Yo, for a story I've heard of The Promised Neverland. Do you guys like that anime? Shall I watch it? Set in a world like this. I didn't expect it to go mainstream, but for those who are into this genre, Heavenly Delusion is something that you may not want to miss. No, <laughs> Hell's Paradise takes you on an adventure to remember. Yeah. For sure, oh. man. So coming into spring 2023, one of the shows that I was most excited for was Hell's Paradise. I had high hopes for it, and I feel that it could be the next big thing in the world of shonen. While I didn't see the expected cultural impact just yet, people have responded. Hell's Paradise is currently one of the more popular shows from spring 2023, Dude, it's so, and it's, it's not so hard good. to see why, you know. Sure, the plot's something that's obviously not meant for those looking for super mature, philosophical takes on the world and the meaning of life, but among shonen titles, it does a really great job in character writing, and it's really fun to learn more about these 
convicts as the show goes on. They all have Isn't their goals crazy? and are easy to root for as they each carry their own charms. Most importantly, they work well together and are such a joy to watch in their respective fight scenes. If you're a fan of action, adventure and anime fights, Hell's Paradise is a must watch, especially since it's a new anime that you can easily pick up from the start and I'm pretty positive we'll be getting more of it in the future. <laughs> right before the halfway mark, we put the spotlight on Dr. Stone New World. What? This anime came out this year? Stop the cap, bro. Stop the cap. <laughs> Dr. Stone's come a pretty long way, hasn't it? If there's a story that's all oh. about the joy of exploration backed with a wonderful world that you want to keep seeing, then this is it. Granted, there have been a couple of shows that have adventure and exploration as its focus. Dr. Stone, however, has a more scientific approach to it, and I'd say that it's worked out wonderfully well so far. With how much I enjoyed Stone Wars, a part of me did feel sad to leave that side of the story and move on to New World, but mostly, I feel that New World showcases the beauty of a story that can be expanded as much as Dr. Stone can. Shifting through focus points seamlessly is something that will always impress me with an anime. It's the same show, yeah. got the same characters, and has the same overarching theme. However, the shift in approach and source of overall tension is a great indicator of the style Dr. Stone uses for its story progression. Still, this is the third season I'm okay. talking about, and rather than talking more about this season, I'd recommend checking this out from the start. After all, Dr. Stone feels like a show that you can't just hop into and enjoy fully. It's something that's all about the journey instead of the hype of the moment. Okay. Okay. It's like, it's like, bro, I ain't even gonna lie. God of High School, like every single episode that I watched of that shit, bro, that shit was so fire. And, like, I don't know, bro. I don't know. It was just so good. <laughs> We then proceed to the newest season of Demon Slayer because why not? No denying how much of a mark Demon Slayer has made okay. in the anime community since the end of the last decade. And there's no reason to think that UFO Table would let up after seeing the franchise break records left and right. That momentum carried on to this yeah. newest season, one that I admittedly didn't have as much hype for as Infinity Train or Entertainment District arc as a source reader. Still, Facts. Swordsmith Village is an integral part of the story, and it's got a lot of moments to remember, all while putting the spotlight on the pillars that needed a lot of shine. If you've watched any of the previous yeah. seasons of Demon Slayer, you already know what to expect by the time you pick up this latest season. Pretty colors, insane animation, basically top-notch production that's quickly becoming the norm in modern shonen blockbusters. I'd say that it's placed here pretty high because it still does a great job entertaining me. However, I don't see Demon Slayer breaking any new ground with its writing or characterization. Still, does it have to? When its main True. appeal has always been the fights, the moments that keep you on the edge of your seats, and the characters who get to show off every other episode. I'd look for Demon Slayer to keep up with the momentum all the way to a cinematic finish as we approach the home stretch. Like, it was a For great season. my fourth ranked title, we have Bungo Stray Dogs the last 4. Oh shit. Yo. From one of the By the way, I just started watching this shit. Like, a couple days ago. Bungo Stray Dogs. So far, I've been enjoying it. I ain't even gonna lie. I'm like on episode 12 or 13 or some shit, bro. The not biggest shonen in the past five years to what I'd call an underrated seinen even in the smaller library in the genre. Bungo Stray Dogs has consistently been a fan favourite in Japan, but the reception just hasn't been the same level overseas. I'll say that you're all missing out on one of the best action seinen out there. Bungo Stray Dogs continues to prove its worth four seasons in, and while I personally had a lot of memorable moments from the previous seasons, the fourth one okay. simply ramps up the intensity. The stakes feel a lot higher than before, and it seems that the thrills and suspense have been up big time. There's more character development, yeah. and while I personally feel that few Rambo? can match the hype of the main hero and his Rambo. rival taking on the villain at the end of the second season, the fourth season of Bungo Stray Dogs has shaped up to the sequel that lives up to its predecessors. Bungo Stray wait, Dogs bro. continues to prove to be a diamond in the rough, a gem that people haven't had the pleasure to experience as much. It's not a completely niche show, but I feel it deserves more love than what I'm seeing. Okay. I fuck with it. I fuck with it. Opening the top three is Oshinoko. 
I've been seeing this everywhere. Like, I've been seeing a lot of this, bro. I gotta see what this is about, because I... Like, I, I've been seeing a, a bunch of thumbnails. Not... I don't actually click on this shit, but... I wanna know what There's this no is. doubt that one of, if not THE, biggest anime phenomenon in 2023 belongs to the list. Coming from the same guy who gave us the smash hit Gaguya Sama comes this title, where things take a way darker turn. Oshinoko probably had so much hype entering the season, and the anime team made sure it lived up to it, even exceeding expectations in a lot of ways. There's a lot of love and care being put on this show, from the movie length opening episode to the huge marketing push on social media. They went all in on Oshinoko, and I think there's no show that deserves it more than this one. There's a lot to be said about how well the show does in the production department, but I always look at Oshinoko more for its thematic value. Sure, if we're going to be cynical and critical, we can see that the whole criticism of the entertainment industry, as well as looking at parasocial relationships in society, is nothing new. Still, I don't think that any modern anime has handled it in a way that hits as hard as it does in Oshinoko. Perhaps it's because of the characters that you can't help but care about, or perhaps it's because of the whole crime thriller premise the show had to hook people in. Maybe because there's just the whole level of gravity in which the show looks at these dark sides of showbiz matters. Oshinoko is definitely one of the strongest hits this okay. year and it more than deserves the praise it's been garnering. I won't crown it new anime of the year just yet, but it's certainly made a very strong case. Make sure you go and watch this one. Okay, y'all tell me more about this anime down in the comments. What is it about, by the way? Get a koyaku! Following it is the latest season of Attack on Titan. <laughs> <laughs> A decade. That's how long it's been since the world was introduced to this epic series known as Attack on Titan. And since then, it's taken us through a lot of twists and turns. From the high Damn. tension and bleak opening seasons to what we have now, I'd say that Attack on Titan has shown us the best of several worlds. With how long it's been, it's hard to talk about the latest season in detail, but I'd say that throughout these years, Attack on Titan has remained consistent in tone and production excellence, even with the change in studio. It's a show that always brings you in with the action, the breathtaking fights, before making you stay with the questions, the mysteries that make you second guess what Dude. you know about humanity. It's a modern masterpiece a decade ago, and I'm going to say that if you're one of the Labs fans who only watched the first few parts, coming back and joining the ride again isn't such a bad proposition. Wait. The hype may have faded from the- Isn't the last episode coming soon, bro? Y'all tell me- y'all tell me when the last episode is coming. I swear I saw somewhere, but- I'm not sure when, but... days, but the journey's still nothing short of amazing. The same still holds true now that we're in the climax of the entire thing. Most fans are probably fully aware of the controversial nature of its manga ending, but I'm more excited as we move towards the home stretch. I really look forward to seeing how the anime will handle it. That's my top anime of 2023 so far. Vinland Saga Season 2. Yeah. <laughs> I fuck with it. Hell I've yeah. always been very high on Vinland Saga. I loved it for how complete it is as a product. You've got the action, the character development, the nice plot progression, the meaningful story beats, the captivating... And you got a lot. Like, I love this show, bro. I love Vinland Saga. I just wish... I don't know why, but I just want to see Thorfinn throw more hands, bro. Like, I want to see him fight more. Now we're getting into, like, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he's going to do this other shit, but... Bro, like, oh no, no, man. So forth. I'm glad I wanted to, to say see him fight that the more. same holds true for this season of Vinland Saga despite the drastic shift in tone. A lot of times, when a series departs from its initial tone in a way as drastic as this one, it does end up being off putting. I mean, this is just what Vinland Saga is now. No longer the violent and lost filled adventures through the treacherous world, but a yeah. drama that's considerably slower in pacing. I'd still say that the magic is still there, and I say that because I know that Vinland Saga's greatest strength is getting you immersed in its world building and characterization. It may no longer be the battle through the high seas, but there's still a whole Man. new world to explore out there and more characters to learn about. Now, the spotlight shines on Torfinn as a war veteran and a focus on what living means to people in this era. Not a lot yeah. of shows can do the genre shift as well as Vinland Saga did, but how it manages to pull it off earns it top spot in my favourite anime of 2023 as far as June goes. But now it just, it just leaves you blue ball though, because bro, you just want more fighting, you know what I'm saying? Like. 
It's still good though. Don't get me wrong. It's still good, but man, I wanted to see him go crazy. Like, especially since he's growing. And that ends my list. I'd appreciate hearing what you have to say about it. That's why you should leave it all down in the comments and what you think are the best shows we've gotten so far. Once again, fire, bro. I definitely got to check out some of those. But anyways, y'all, KZ fan, stay positive, stay healthy, and most definitely keep that strong mentality, man. Um, out.